in the person of Professor Richard Amankwa. Please give him a round of applause as he gives the chairperson's response. That is blasters for you. Very energetic group. Thank you very much. I'm happy to welcome all of you back to campus, um, especially the alumni away for a very long time. We are happy to have you back. I can see the 1999 SRC president, Mr. Drew, can you give me a wave? <laughs> I can see. The 1998 Blasters boss. <laughs> Can you give me a wave, please? So the Blasters is your boss. <laughs> and he's now the general manager of Future Resources, F FGR, right? Yes. So it means that if you can add big future. I'm happy to welcome all you wonderful people. I see Nana Boachi here. Nana Onkwasu. The president is also here. And our own Professor Suleiman Hassan is here. Thank you very much. I see Foba. I see good old Boogie also at the far end. You are all very welcome. I see George Nito, the metallurgy director, <laughs> and Andy. It is good to interact with you all over again, uh, mainly because the alumni of any institution form a major group of stakeholders. And normally, what they think and what they do has a big influence on the direction of that institution. We at UMAT, we are happy that we have a very strong relationship and a good bond with our alumni. And therefore, every now and then, when we call upon them, they are able to come on board to support us. If you look around the whole of the world, there is no mining institution, I dare say, that you will not see a UMAT aluminous in there. And for this, we are very proud. Um, just when we were sitting here a few minutes ago, the speaker for this afternoon's program just whispered in my ears that there's one UMAT aluminous who is a ventilation engineer in a mine in the U.S., and he wants to have a good link with UMAT. So he wa she wants to link us up. And I said, sure, I'm the contact person. Please give me his number, and I'll call him immediately. These are the things that keep things alive and keep the university moving forward. So if we are here to celebrate the 10th alumni homecoming, then it is a great pleasure for me to step in as chairperson. So I accept the person and to steer the affairs of this program. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't hear the clap for the VC. Please let's clap for him again. Thank you. We'll take the university song now. Um, if you have the brochure, kindly move to the last page. It's also projected up there.
Thank you very much. The 10th annual Alumat Lecture is proudly sponsored by Pamiko Limited. This is a wholly Ghanaian founded company which was founded in the year 1993 and then their model is to provide a variety of drilling, construction and still work services to the Ghanaian construction and mining industry. So we have their pull-up banner here and we can reach out to them after. For enquiries, we can email them on enquiry at pamico.com. Now we also have the Alumat souvenirs down there. So please do all to go downstairs and get a souvenir for yourself. I would welcome the chairperson, Professor Richard Amankwa, to introduce the speaker for today. Please welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. And this year, as the moderator said, we have a female engineer to speak to us. Our speaker holds a BSc in Geomatics Engineering, and she graduated in 2005 from the University of Mines and Technology. And she also has an MSc in Mining Engineering, so Geomatic and Mining. And Mining, she achieved it in 2010. She was lucky to go through three different transitions in the school, namely KNUST School of Mines, Western University College, and finally, UMAT. The speaker, as known in her career, has been in charge of Newmont Africa long-term planning team since March 2021. After working as the chief mining engineer of Newmont Achin Mine for three years. Before the above positions, she worked as a mine surveyor, short-term planning engineer, long-term strategic planning engineer, senior long-term planning engineer, wow, big ones, senior supervising mining engineer and regional consulting mining engineer, strategic planning. These are wonderful. She has over 16 years of experience working in the mining industry and has been involved in training, coaching, mentoring, managing, and developing engineers in both technical and leadership skills. All stages of mine planning, all reserves and resource computation and reporting, open pit optimization and design, cost analysis, and cut-off grades evaluation, project financial evaluation and feasibility studies, and developing mine survey and planning procedures. She is married with two kids, and she enjoys hobbies such as listening to music, especially from the blasters, singing, and meeting new people. She likes working in the resource industry because it is a great area for females in this part of the world, and she believes she can change young ladies' perspectives about this type of engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, the speaker is known as Mrs. Efia Fima Ba Opoku. Please help me to welcome Efia Fima Ba as is known in the industry. I thought you would tell me to hug her, but you didn't, so I won't do it.
Thank you very much, Professor Chair, for such a great introduction. I'm very much honored. Um, with New Month tradition, I want to start quickly with a values moment before we go into the lecture. When we talk about values moment, it's anything that can uplift our values, but it also includes us looking at some kind of safety share. We've been looking at breast cancer in October because it's breast cancer month and I'm sure many of you are wondering why breast cancer. Um, we've had a lot of information and stats about women and the reason why we need to do checks as women. But today I don't want to dwell so much on women. I want to bring to our attention that men can also get breast cancer. And so we need to pay attention. I didn't actually find any stats, in, but let's look at some stats from US. Less than 1% of all breast cancer cases occurs in men. The lifetime risk of getting breast cancer is about one in thousand. But anyway, it's way less than that of women because women is one in eight. It can occur at any age, but it is usually detected at an average age of 67. Men can be at elevated rates if you actually have a family member who has had it before or some testicular conditions, or if you, are, you have someone who has heavy drinking habits or smoking habits. Survival rates for men are about the same as for women, and the same stage, around the same stage of diagnosis. However, men are often diagnosed at a later stage of breast cancer men may less likely than women report symptoms which may lead to the, um, delayed diagnosis so please beware of this so that as your wife is monthly checking for breast cancer symptoms please also you to you need to do well and check so that it will not you not get to know it too late thank you very much Now to my lecture, Professor Chair, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Richard K. Amankwa, Honorable Governor Otreda Kumensa, the Western Regional Minister, Managing Directors and Teams of Mining and Allied Companies present, the Principal Officers of the School, the Academic and Office Deans, Head of Department, teaching and non-teaching senior members, other staff of the university, fellow alumni of this great institution, distinguished students, ladies and gentlemen. If you are wondering if I'm really an engineer, Professor Chair, let me express my sincerest gratitude to the leadership of the Alumni Association of UMAT for settling on me to deliver the 10th annual Alumat lecture on this August occasion of UMAT at 70 years on the topic Practical Insight into the Growth of the Mining Industry in Ghana perspective of UMAT trained female engineer. Most of my decisions today would be based on my experience of a little 
less than two decades in the mining industry. I will be taking you through some historical perspective and female participation in the Ghana mine industry, my experience in the mine so far, the growth in Ghana's mine company, some notable challenges of female engineers, and the conclusion. So going to the historic Professor Chair, gold mining in Ghana may be traced back to the 15th, to the 5th and the 6th century BC, before the sailors sailed around Africa. It is, however, of no doubt that gold mine, mining began in Ghana long before the arrival of the first Europeans, the Portuguese, on the shores of our country somewhere in 1471. Kada Maestro, a sailor who set out in 1455 and 1456, said, that all the gold used to mint coins in Portugal, Spain, and Italy during that, those ages came from Gold Coast and Upper Niger. History has it that gold trading from Akan areas was one of the major commodities for the Trans-Sahara caravan trade, with gold sold through Morocco and Egypt to the olden days Europe. Asante, Dentra, Achim, Wasa, Ahanta, Owin, Nzema, Asin, Sefi, and Chifu are some of the areas early tra tradition mentioned as being rich in gold. Among the Akans, generally gold dust, also known as Sikafutro, was the main currency for trading. Indeed, the motivation for the Portuguese sailing to West Africa was to shore up the platinum gold reserves in Lisbon. It is also said that the name Elmina, derived from Portuguese word El Mina, meaning the mine, was given to the, by the Portuguese where, who were astonished by the large quantities of gold mined at, the, at this part of the coast. Of course, the name Gold Coast also resulted from the abundance of gold in the region, which later became attraction for European commerce with the Dutch and the English joining the Portuguese. Akan women were responsible for panning for gold along the rivers. After a heavy rainfall, women could find gold littered along the riverbeds that could be easily obtained by hand. These pieces of gold mainly small nuggets. Women could easily see these nuggets after the rainy seasons and would use wooden bowls to dig in the sand along the shore. Afterwards, they would shake the bowls, allowing the sand and the gold to sink to the bottom they would pour out the water and pick the gold from remained from what remains. This process continued by transferring the remaining sand and dirt to the small bowls with water and shaking until all the gold had been picked from the sand that had been collected initially. Panning gold along the banks of streams, rivers, coastal gravels, and sand usually after a rainstorm was the main method of mining then. Ancobra, Ophin, Tanor, Brim were the major sources of gold. Among the Akan, gold was regarded as sacred to be mined only for goods of commodity. Thus, when the two mines in Portuguese the two mines the Portuguese built in Abrobi and Abrosi in the 7th century collapsed. It was attributed to supernatural vengeance 
on the Portuguese to extract gold for their benefit rather than goods of the commodity. Although later, literature attributed the collapse of the mine to earthquake and badly short tunnels. For the next two centuries, the European state of mining the only and only resorted to butter trading in gold. As a result, gold mining remained the preserve of local people. The panning of gold continued somewhere to the middle of the 18th century, when the surface gold became almost depleted. The people resorted to other methods, like dredging of the river banks and pit mining, with simple tools like hammer, chisel, digging holes, and lamp for visibility. The Gold Coast 1898 annual report stated, if, country, if the country was as developed as Johannesburg then, it would have about 30 million tons of banked gold from which about 40 million pounds in gold could be extracted within 10 years. This, commit, this comment, along with the government's determination to build a railway from Sekendi to Takwa, sparked renewed interest in the area of gold mining. Mr. Chairman, I would want to talk a little bit about my career journey. And I know you have made mention of most of it. But um, considering the level of experience that we have among our alumni group here, you may think my life is just beginning. Although I am proud to say that I can stand in as a female role model for many of the up and coming engineers which wasn't common a few years back. Why I became a mining engineer? My story started two decades ago, or over two decades ago, when someone in my secondary school found out that my mother had some um, health background. So they thought I could be a clinic prefect. Within the first week of my role as a clinic prefect, I knew that I couldn't deal with blood, so I'd rather deal with metals. Whenever someone comes to the clinic bleeding, I will start feeling dizzy as a nurse. So from that, I got to know that I don't qualify, what I don't qualify to do as a person. And also, I was able to get a very conducive environment as a clinic prefect to help me learn the halves of the biology, physics, and chemistry gas that we couldn't complete in class before the SSE. Well, after all that, I didn't get my first choice to be the electrical engineer that I wanted to be, that I applied for. But I was lucky enough that Professor Emeritus Daniel Mrekujima had made a decision to increase the female population in the school. So I was able to get in here, School of Mines in 2001. And I ended up in Mr. A. A. Mainsen's class. Mr. Mayor Mensa made us feel that surveyors are the richest in the engineering field. Well, I found that very quickly when I got to the mines that there were conditions attached to that claims. In three years of becoming the best mine surveyor that I can ever be, I decided to move to mine planning. And to give you a hint, of why I am so loyal to Newmont. And people ask me so much. It's because the company is so much committed to me and they have made me who I am today. The Newmont Mining Company, 
earlier as the University of Newmont. It's interested in employee development and saw me through my interest to the latter. And trust me, they are not done with me yet. So as the chairman mentioned, I became a short-term engineer, a long-term and strategic planner engineer, a senior long-term engineer, a senior supervising mining engineer, a regional consulting planning engineer, chief mining engineer, and now the regional long-term planning manager. I am starting to prepare for the next one. Mr. Chairman, my favorite quote, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. I believe in all industries. When we get the team working towards a common goal, we achieve better results than when we individually pick our own goals and start working in different directions. Mining has been a male-dominated occupation, irrespective of where it occurs. Employment statistics shows that women constitute less than 20% of the mining workforce in the leading mining countries in the world. Though women have been involved in mining activities for centuries, as I mentioned earlier, we are still significantly underrepresented compared to the male counterparts. Not only are women poorly represented in the core mining opera operations, but their presence in the managerial positions is also not significant. Mining.com in 2014 shows that global, globally, the mining industry has the lowest number of female board member members compared to other industries. The study estimated that women occupied about 8% of all board seats in the top 100 mining companies, with only four women executive directors in this group. While in the top 100 to 500 mining companies, the number of women is less than 4%. Ghana continues to have more female than male, according to the provisional results of the 2021 population and housing census. There are about 400,000 more females in Ghana than male. From the 2017 International Labor Organization estimates, female employees are underrepresented in every age range in mining compared to the national working age population. So you can see from the chart, the female population is now about 50.7% 50 of the total population in Ghana compared to men at 49.3%. As of 2017, 48% of the labor force in Ghana was constituted by male. Moreover, 52% of the labor force was female, representing fair distribution, employment, gender mix. And the working age population was 47 male and 53% uh, female. Mining and quarry activities accounted for 1.8% of occupations in Ghana in 2017. ILO estimated the participation rate of female employees in the mining category at 18% in 2017. Okay. Female employees are concentrated in a few roles and absent from most occupation group in mining. And it's not just in Ghana. We can see the same situation everywhere. Australia, Canada, Mexico, and all the big mining countries. And you can see the division of the employees in Canada as well. 
we can see where we have more women are uh, administrative assistants and um, general office workers. We don't have a lot of them in the technical fields. Mr. Chairman, I want to talk a little bit about student enrollment at UMAT. Since the establishment of the Takwa Institution, Takwa Technical Institution, in 1952, the school has undergone several rebranding and name changes over the years from the KNUST School of Mines, Takwa, in 1976 to the Western University College Book of News in 2001. And finally, in 2004, the University of Mines and Technology became a fully fledged university. Until 1988, when Mrs. Regina Indede earned a certificate in motor vehicle technician, part one and two, and 1996, when Mrs. Victoria Bleponi and BSc in mining engineering, the institution graduates tend to be all men. Mrs. Ruth Menz was the first female MSc mining engineering student in 2005, and Professor Grace Ofori Sapon has also earned her position as the first female professor in mining-related subjects in Ghana. All these great women deserve recognition for their pioneering efforts in this respective field. Mr. Chairman, to blow my own horn, I am pleased to say that in 2005, I became the first female in this school's history to graduate from the School of Engineering with first class honors, paving the way paving the way for many more females to follow my footsteps. Today, through the strategic and conscious effort led by the first Vice Chancellor, Professor Emeritus Daniel Mrekujima, in 2007, UMAT has increased the number of females intake into the various engineering programs. The number of female students at UMAT has increased significantly thanks to the efforts of partnering institutions like the Ghana Chamber of Mines, the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, as well as groups like Women in Engineering, Women in Mining, and Ladies in Mining and Allied Professions in Ghana. At the end of 2021, out of 12 1,236 persons working in the mines, only 98 of them were experts, representing about 0.8% of the total mining labor force. Why am I bringing this here? It is clear that the localization policy outlined in the Act 703 is working very well and we can see a significant drop in the number of expatriates in Ghana as of the end of 2001. Professor Chairman, should the country start to look at gender balance within the minerals and mining industry as a requirement for granting mining lease? Mr. Chairman, I want to go into the Ghana's mining growth. Ladies and gentlemen, the growth experience of the Ghanaian mining industry has mirrored closely that of the national economy against the backdrop of the weak economic conditions that prevailed in the late 1970s and 1980s. During the period, gold production had decreased by 47% diamond by 67%, magnets by 43%, and bauxite by 46%. In the same period, GDP growth was volatile, inflation 
was persistently high and the country experienced payment difficulties. The mining industries began to recover in the late 1980s, largely due to incentives to investors provided by the Minerals and Mining Law of 1986. Ghana has since 1980 to 2006 attracted several direct investments from mineral exploration and establishment of new mines and the expansion of and rehabilitation of existing mines. The mining industry is the largest tax paying sector in the country and made a significant contribution to GDP and employment. In the past two decades, we have seen much growth in the mining industry all over the world in terms of safety culture, technology, gender equality and bias, and many more. Let's dive more into a few of these growth areas. Mr. Chairman, in the mining industry, the topic of safety, health, and environmental responsibility, she has been front and center in executive's mind for a while now. Stakeholders have increasingly demanded accountability for the industry impact on employees and society overall. And closer attention to she has generated positive results, including reduction in the number of total recordable injuries in the mining industry. Safety culture is how people in the company behave when no one is looking. There are several subcultures that contributes to the overall safety culture of an organization. And these have been grouped into five main interconnecting components that made up a positive safety culture as shown in the chat that we are looking at. We need to pay attention to all these components to have a positive safety culture. Flexible, just, informed, reporting, and learning cultures. Because of time, I wouldn't want to go into all of that. And make sure, we, we just need to make sure that we have also a systematic way of investigating on safe acts, incidents, accidents, near misses, that is open, consistent, and fair. Mr. Chairman, looking at mine journey, mining journey in technology, the extractive industry continues to look for innovative ways to mine sustainably, produce efficiently, and create value. Years back, mining control was done by a pager, as you can see. That beeps and tells you where to go and who to talk to. Also, the daily shift report were received on a pager, mainly the total tonnage production and some track KPIs. The current dispatch system used in our mines tells us a lot about where we are in the mining technology journey. Blasting. And I know many um, of our mines here are still using the primer and um, the that called forming boosters and then doing the surface connections. But others have taken the lead with the new blasting toy known as the WebGen. A new blasting technology where you put the booster and the detonator into the hole, no surface connections, and you can set it to blast anytime electronically. This is the best safety blasting device available. Mine planning was done initially using contours mainly to figure out the cut and fills and direct the operators. Now we have a lot of innovative softwares that helps make mine planning efficient and reliable. When we come to the material handling, 
the autonomous track system already in use in some mines are step ahead of what we are mostly using man operation tracks in terms of safety and operational efficiency. Pit wall monitoring. We are now going from prison monitoring to satellite monitoring systems. Now, survey has gone from chains, chaining to total stations to GPS and now drones. These are major growths. Mr. Chairman, I look at all these changes and I wonder where we would be by the time I am retiring. We have heard of artificial intelligence. And if you believe in the Terminator prophecy, where AI will take over from humanity, People are saying that it's coming around 2045 between and 2050. We will get there soon. And Mr. Chairman, my question is, what is the University of Mines, the only university in Ghana doing about this? How are we preparing for this? What will be the role of our next generation mining related engineers. We all witnessed how quickly cell phone changed. When these changes start, it comes very quickly. Hence, we need to prepare our next generation engineers for the mine of tomorrow, which is going to be more efficient, flexible, productive, and valuable with reduced footprint. Mr. Chairman, my last topic on the growth, which is a topic that I'm very passionate about, is gender equality and bias. Gender equality is, of course, one of the most pressing global issues of our time and one of the sustainable development goals that UN released in 2015 to map out what governments the private sectors, the individuals should aspire to transform our planet. The concept of gender equality is that women and men, girls and boys have equal conditions, treatment and opportunities for realizing their full potential, human rights and dignity, and for contributing to economic, social, cultural and political development. Equality does not mean that women and men will become the same, but that women's and men's rights, responsibility, and opportunities will not depend on whether they are born male or female. The interest needs, the interest needs and priorities of both women and men must be taken into consideration. Recognizing the diversity of different groups and that all human beings are free to develop their abilities and make choices without any limitations set by stereotype and prejudice about gender roles. Gender bias is making decisions either consciously or unconsciously based on gender that results in favoring one gender over the other, which often results in contests that favors men over women. Importance of having gender balance in a team. Integrating women properly can improve community relations and local economic development while higher levels of gender diversity in the workplace can drive productivity and innovation. 66% more creativity is produced when there are diverse thinking styles rather than the same one-sided gender way of thinking. Employee engagement doubles for teams that prioritize diversity and inclusion. 
When diversity and inclusion are successfully employed, business results improved by 83% and team collaboration improved by 43%. When leaders give diverse voices equal attention, employees are more than three times as likely to contribute for, to full innovative potentials. This data is not new. Some of the study date as far back as seven years and more. But most companies are still catching up with integrating women properly. Notable challenges of female engineers. Ladies and gentlemen, many are the challenges for female who ventures this career path. To mention a few, how many female role models do we have in their minds to push us towards the highest goal. The leadership of the mining companies needs to make conscious efforts to set leadership examples by empowering females. There is still the question of why we've been unsuccessful in converting all the highly educated females who started at the mines into leaders. The problem often referred to as leaky pipeline. It's often given as the counterpiece, centerpiece of discussion related to gender diversity. The basic premises is that if we were only to patch the pipeline by recognizing these as real problems and support women as they progress through their careers, this would be fixed. Some of the problems are gender pay gap, culture of male dominance, pink and blue world of unconscious bias, and many others. Most of the time, these bias, harassment, bullying can make a woman want to quit. There is also the need for us as females to believe in ourselves and know that we can do it. Women need to have courage, self-efficacy, and self-esteem to step out of our comfort zone. Studies show that before a female applies for a role, then she knows she is more than qualified. Men, when they are like 50% there, they will still go and try. The thought of females need to fit in before they can become minors. Think like a man, dress like a man, work like a man, actually cares like a man, and etc. No, we need to be ourselves. We are emotional, and so let's apply our emotional intelligence in our leadership. We have good intuition. Let's apply that in safety and still in our leadership. Be a mother to your team, and you will get the best out of them. I can go on and on and on. The work and family balance for women in the mind, especially when our husbands are also working, is one of the biggest challenge. It brings a lot of family discussions, sometimes disputes, to get females to progress in their career path. It is hard time we start building a new culture for our kids that mom can be an engineer and dad can also be a caretaker at home. Yeah, I see we are happy. But women, please, when that happens, don't forget to give the chop money. Professor Chairman, for a successful gender balance in our mining companies and all our professional offices in Ghana, we need the support of the government, investors, board communities, families, and from the females ourselves. 
Society can assist by ensuring government support through policies and strategies to reach gender equality, encouraging transparency by recognizing companies and individuals that are moving the needle, challenging traditional gender roles through places of education and NGO efforts, emphasizing the importance of household role modeling. Rwanda has set an example for us right here in Africa, becoming the first country in the world to have 50% female representative in their parliament. It can be done here in Ghana too. Like many of the major mining organizations have started. Mining companies need to reset their current culture, which was, in most cases, developed with men in mind, to drive the full potential of diversity. And then, for the individuals. Although addressing societal norms and changing organizational culture are critical factors in achieving gender equality. Every woman can take steps to help navigate her own journey to the top. We need to be proactive in learning from others. Several common traits are possessed by successful men and women, and I encourage all women to adapt and emulate them when possible in our careers. We need to develop for ourselves a thriving career plan. A crucial part of career longevity is feeling as though we are thriving professionally and personally, not just succeeding in your job. Success does not necessarily give you the energy required to pursue a long-term career. When you are thriving, which requires you to think more holistically about your career and personal aspirations, you have, to, you have the energy to pursue them. Mr. Chairman, to conclude, mining in Ghana has gone through tangible growth in terms of safety, technology, localization, and even gender parity. Considering the big technological growth, engineers need to be sharper and more accurate than now. For instance, an automated track will not move at its designed speed and make the required production if the hot roads are not designed and built to the exact specification. Attaining positive safety culture needs to continue to be the topmost focus of each of the mining leadership. It is important every employee go home to their families safely each day after achieving the day's production. This is what every manager should call success in the mining industry. Many companies are working hard to close the gender balance gap in the mining related works, but still more needs to be done, starting with the government looking into policies and actions to generate more and better job for women in mining within the country by addressing the structural barriers faced by women, including abolishing laws, regulations, and cultural practices that are based on gender stereotypes or which perpetuate traditional gender roles and restrict the types of work which women can engage. Limit women's freedom of movement or aggravate gender-based discrimination, violence, and harassment in the workplace. 
equal remuneration for work of equal value, protection of maternity, Companies must take the most comprehensive action by embedding gender equality into their corporate culture and incorporating gender initiatives into the business strategies approved at the board levels, ensure the mind sites are set up to be accessible for women not lacking the right equipment, changing facilities, or childcare facilities. Companies also must establish strong accountability framework for their operations and engage in community-wide efforts to educate and inform others about diversity. The current generation needs to continuously inculcate these gender parity ideas into our kids for sustainable change. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, we are Women, we as women, need to be motivated in developing ourselves and getting ourselves ready for higher levels by training people to replace us and deciding on our next career steps and working hard to get there. Women, yes, we can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. You yeah, are a great inspiration to all women in engineering and also to the men as well. Please, let's give her a round of applause once again. I must say, I could relate to some of the slides she shared, especially with the challenges with women leading. I started my current role as a lead um, a few months ago, and I... <laughs> I don't think women in engineering has gotten to that point where we actually deserve the recognition that we need. And then there's still more work to support the women. So as a take home for everyone, let's support women. And yes, of course, we can do it. Please let's clap for all the women out there. Please let's rise for the Umatan team. Let's go. 
Let's take our seats. Thank you. All right. We'll take the next address from the special guest. In the person of Honorable Kwabina Otreda Komensa, who is the Western Regional Minister. You're welcome, sir. Professor Chairman, this seventh. For the seventieth anniversary lecturers, the registrar, Mrs. Ifia Fima Ba Opoku, who just delivered an excellent lecture. Dr. Stephen K. Indede, Alumat National President. And you know, my regional chairman is so called Indede. So when I saw it first, I thought I was coming to this place with my regional chairman. Executives of Alumat, lecturers, alumni students, members of the press, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is heartwarming to see all of you gathered here this afternoon to be part of the 10th annual Alumat lecture, 70th anniversary lecture. A lecture that will investigate the essential contributions of mentors to the young mining professionals in the Ghanaian mining industry, as well as the industry's progress. Your presence and participation are a manifestation of your great interest in this renowned institution. And we in the Western region are very grateful for that. In fact, because I attended KNUST, I also see you, Matt, as my school as well. In fact, when I was at KNUST, this was a college of UST. We don't call it K, we call it UST. Okay. I therefore welcome everyone far and near, especially those who don't live in the Western region, to Western region. I am also very happy to say a big aquaba to you all, and I believe that those of who are students always feel at home when you are here. In fact, when I was invited to speak, more so the participation in the I was very happy because I've always been a shiro because a father that have three daughters I could see Mame Brago and Ejewa I feel elated when I see women move up in position and do big things ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> with me that you hello. hello okay you might happens to be one of the few public excellence world class hello maybe i should have it Hello, good. For with the vision of becoming a set of excellence in Ghana and Africa for producing world class professionals in the field of mining, technology, and its related disciplines. Mr. Chairman, 
we cannot talk about you mats without mining especially gold mining permit me therefore to use this opportunity to commend the school for delivering quality engineering and technology education to students who are pursuing programs in mining petroleum and related engineering discipline ladies and gentlemen let's tread down memory lane to when this school started nurturing you gradually and slowly with care and responsibility the school has helped teach you right from wrong and laid the foundation for your successful life as alumat the team for today practical insight into the growth of the mining industry in ghana perspective of of a UMAT trained female engineer shows that the mining of materials and minerals in ghana did back to the fifth and sixth century bc when phoenicians and Cartaginians reached the gold coast former name of ghana it will interest you all to know how ghana is abundantly endowed with rich economic minerals such as mica salt kaolane columbite tantalite felspar chrome silica sun quartz lime lithium iron ore etc and i have been told by this university that even western region we also have lithium ladies and gentlemen the mining industry of ghana has grown from the era when gold dust was exchanged for cooking utensils and hats through the conscious exploration and establishment of minerals and mining institutions like the ghana geological survey authority in 1913 by the government and mining companies and by enthusiastic individuals and corporate bodies aimed at vibrantly managing the exploitation of minerals in ghana to facilitate the growth of ghana mining industry infrastructure such as roofs rail and ports were developed to enable the landing and transportation of large mining machinery and the establishment of the Takwa Technical Institute in 1952. Incorporated the training of mining technicians and other middle level manpower for the country's mining and related industries of the country. Today, mining is a seven billion industry with direct government take of only 3%, yet employing over 5 million people directly and indirectly. Roughly, this 5 million is 30% of Ghana's adult population of 17 million. Therefore, it is an industry for the ordinary people. It is an industry to protect for the masses. Mr. Chairman, I am reliably informed that mining professionals produced by UMAT were mainly males until the jinx associated with mining as being a preserve for men was broken by Mrs. Regina Indedi for completing the certificate program in motor vehicle technician part one and two in 1988. And Mrs. Victoria Bliponi for completing the BSc Mining Engineering Program in 1996. Several organizations such as Women in Engineering, Women in Mining, Ladies in Mining, and other professions in Ghana, etc. Innovations by UMAT and the Ghana Chamber of Mines have enabled women to be attracted to the mining profession in the 21st century Ghana. Although Ghana continues to have more females than males according to the provisional results of the 2021 population and housing sunset about 50.7 of female employees are underrepresented in every age range in mining compared to the national working population however owing to the gender mainstreaming drive at human women are given incentives to enroll in mining related programs which have contributed to an increase in the number of women in the mining industry to this we say are you coach you Matt? and we believe more women in mining would definitely come to stem the tide of the bad practices in the mining industry
Mr. Chairman, in the face of addressing issues in Ghana, His Excellency, the President, Nanadu Danko Akufaso, had met with all traditional and local government leaders in an effort to address the illegal mining issue that is damaging Ghana's economy and reputation. Hence, government determination to sanitize the small-scale mining industry in spite of all obstacles that it can sustainably contribute to nation's social economic growth and preserve the nation's abundant resources for today and future generation. Mr. Chairman, regarding the steps taken to curtail Galamse activities and boost revenue in the small-scale mining industry, the Deputy Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Mr. Mriku Duka, has announced that the government will soon launch the Situation Room to remotely monitor and manage underground operations across the nation. Through this arrangement, the activities of miners and their equipment will be tracked and digitally relayed to the Minerals Commission offices. That will complement the deployment of river gas to permanently patrol river bodies like the Ofen, Ankroba, and Pra. Further, the Community Mining Scheme and the launch of the National Alternative Employment and Livelihood Program is being implemented to promote environmental friendly mining practices and create more opportunities for the use, both males and females. And we all believe that the launch of the NAELP was done here in this same hall. We therefore believe that increasing private sector participation in the form of direct investment, exploration, finance and research and technology transfer will help to make this a reality. I am happy to state that the mining industry has been shown successfully as a formidable sector for long-term economic growth at the 2020 Ghana Gold Expo and the 2021 and 2022 Ghana Mining Week, especially with a thorough regulatory framework and rising formalization. As I speak, Bank of Ghana has started its responsible sourcing program under its local gold buying program, which will help enhance the formalization of the small-scale sector. Also, Gold Coast Refinery became the first refinery in West Africa to obtain a Responsible Jewelry Council RJC certificate in the whole of West Africa under this government. Ladies and gentlemen, it is more appropriate for us as a region that mines and produces gold, among others, to act as the focal point for ethical mining and mining-related activities. It is on this basis that I call on the Small Scale Miners Association to take up the responsibility of reclamation and degraded lands and replanting as a communal labor of their sector so as to save their businesses and the five million jobs in the sector. After all, with mining, the provision, the provision too, the provision of mining advisory by mining professionals, especially the women miners, to the small scale mining industry as their community outreach program, especially in the area of recirculating dams and wells, so that mining tailings and washout do not end up as silt in river bodies, especially for those engaged in alluvial mining. Because it's because they end up as silt. That is why people also go there to go and mine again in these river bodies. Three, the transfer of the reclamation bonds from the Minerals Commission in Accra to district assemblies through the now activated district mining committees to support the reclamation effort of the small scale mining participants. And last but not least, the complete decentralization of mining licenses and institute mobile licensing regime to help legalize and control more mining activities, especially those that do not fall within the red zones of water bodies and the forest reserve. As I end my speech, ladies and gentlemen, all that I want to tell the women in mining is that in the same way that Mrs. Opoku became a first class student without being given any quota, is the same way I see a lot of you can rise without any affirmative action.
others before us as women have done it before. And I always tell the story of my grandmother. She was only given a call, May Martin, and she turned it into hotels. So if women take a decision that want to break the glass ceiling, I believe that, Madam, others have done it. You have done it. And let's encourage all the women that they don't need quotas to break the glass ceiling. As I continue, I do believe that the school vision in mind, we should not lose sight of the fundamental role we play as alumni in the lives of the students. Let's continue to integrate growth and development strategies, as well as the experiences learned to the young ones. You should be proud for coming this far due to the strong network of the alumni. Holding back should not be a choice, but rather giving back to our alma mater and society. Like I said earlier, mining. Yen to me, and say. I welcome you all once again to the Western region. Long live Lumat. Long live Umat. Long live Ghana. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all. Thank you very much, Honorable. Um, that was an, another impactful lecture or an address from the Western Regional Minister. And I'm sure you, Matt, is going to go a long way to make sure that we have more female engineers and more women in mining. On this note, we will thank the chair closing remark. Please let us welcome the vice chancellor, the person of Professor Richard Amankwa, to give us the closing remarks. Thank you very much. I think we've had a very wonderful time here. And I'm proud of you, Matt Alumni. I got to know that Dr. Ndede owes you, Matt, double double for himself and also for his wife. <laughs> so please, I'll come to you for the check. Um, do make it ready. The speaker talked about the low presence of women in the mining industry and also talked about those who were bold enough to break through the glass ceiling to change the narrative and the discussion. And I'm glad that she's one of them. Being the first lady to make first class in UMAT, I think she deserves a round of applause. Are there any other lady first class students here? Keep it hot and go through. We are waiting. We are proud of you. As the regional minister said, you don't need quotas to do this. Work hard because other people have gone ahead and you can also do it. She talked about the mining safety culture and the need to always ensure that you do things in a safe and right way. She also talked about the mining journey in technology, where new areas in blasting have come up. You sit in your office. You don't have to go to the field to do it. And talked about autonomous trucks, where mining meets mechanical engineering and computer science. And I believe that some of our students here can team up, the miners, the mechanical people, the computer people can team up and one day we can also build our own autonomous trucks that can be used in the minerals industry. She talked about satellite monitoring instead of pulling chains and other things. Indirectly, AI is the way to go now because that is where the action is. She also talked about the gender equality and bias. And I believe that with people like her in the seat, many of these narratives are changing. She made some startling, do I say facts, which maybe the men here we have to take note of. 
She said that when you have women in your team, you can increase creativity by 60%. Men, are you there? <laughs> Me, there, I don't know. <laughs> but she said it. And I believe her. So let us get more women in our teams and increase creativity by 60%. She also said that it is good to let children know that mommy can be an engineer and daddy can be the caretaker. But I was quick to add that even if daddy is the caretaker, she shouldn't forget to give the chop money. <laughs> you see how life is. <laughs> so these are very interesting things that our speaker talked about. And I believe that we've learned a lot in terms of um, the growth of the minerals industry, the increase in the presence of men, uh, women in the field, the rewriting of the narratives, and the desire to apply technology, AI, and everything to get the system running. Um, I'm happy once again that we could have this function, and I'm glad you could all come. Thank you very much. Um, let me mention that the municipal chief executive is also here with us, and he came with the regional minister. Um, it's in the person of Honorable Ben Kess. And he's a good friend of the university. Honorable, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, we can hear the blasters shouting more women. So, <laughs> so they have requested we give them three minutes, just three minutes, and then we'll take the appreciation message from Dr. Steven, but three minutes for the blasters. Please come.
Ade. He is the current president for Aluma. It's the national president. Please let's have some silence. And let's welcome the national president for Aluma. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, MC. The blasters. Are you there? I noticed. You know, when we arrived, I heard some air blast. Are you hearing blasts? I heard air blast. But when we are about to close, I heard a blast. So tomorrow come, I'll give you proper explosives so that I can shake the ground and not give me air blast. We thank the Almighty God for this opportunity. Um, the whole 70th anniversary has run through over uh, throughout the year, and getting close to December, where we will conclude. Yesterday we had a big lecture from one of our professors, her inaugural lecture. The weather has been good. This morning the weather was good. God, is, in His own wisdom, gave us some showers. To bless us and then after that everything has been good i will thank the lord for that chairman we thank you for holding the fort i don't want to say much we are very grateful our honorable minister honorable dr kobna ochida kumensa we very much appreciate your time that you spent with us. In fact, when you came, we were just about to conclude one of the sessions. And so you have been here ahead of us. So the who, those who saw the minister just come to have a seat, no, he has been here ahead of us even before we came. Uh, in fact, when you were leaving out, I wasn't quite sure. I came out of my car just to stop you. Uh, because I was not a... Uh, I didn't tell you that my brother is a Siandede. You didn't stop. <laughs> so go and tell my brother Siandede that uh, you saw his brother here. We are town folks. Thank you for your time. And uh, our speaker, I fear, you've done very well. And uh, I am a planner myself, but I will come for coaching. Thank you. You've treated the topic in depth, and we are very grateful. And uh, I believe our ladies around will take a cue out of it. So she's been the first, the first, the first, the first lady to give us the alumni coming lecture. So, one of the first, again. We are grateful to the university faculty and staff. The blasters, once again, we thank you. You've made our day. We appreciate. CEOs of mining and allied organizations who are here, for since this morning, you've been with us and you are still around. Our CEO for our district, our MC, we appreciate your presence as well. All alumni around, we are very grateful. And a special appreciation to the organizing committee 
and more especially my vice president, Dr. Peter Samson. He's done a great work organizing these activities. We appreciate all of you for making time to attend, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and students of this great university who also came in to listen to the lecture. Today, at 6.30, there will be an alumni dinner at the AGA Idrapram Senior Staff Club. So alumni around is on the platform. And I, I'm just reminding you, Honorable Minister, I don't know whether you are going back to Takwadi or not. If you have time and you are in Takwa, you are invited, 6.30 at the AGA Club. Without taking much time, we have to go and change and go in our dancing shoes to the club. So I will not take much time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We'll take the closing prayer from the vice president of Aluma. Um, I think the president just gave him a complimentary message. Um, Dr. P Peter Samson. All right. Uh, I would call OKT to give us the closing prayer then. It's all right uh, for the closing prayer. Father Lord, indeed, it's a great day, and we thank you for this moment. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for the traveling mercies that you granted unto us. We thank you for the delivery from our alumnus, Mrs. Opoku. We thank you for the participants. Father, we are living here as a people who are blessed who will testify that it is good that we spend this time together. As we live, we pray that Jehovah God, you grant us traveling mercies to wherever we came from. And we pray and commit this evening's session also unto you. We pray that we will continue to rejoice and count this day a blessing. We ask this and many more in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you to everyone for making it for the session. Do have a good evening. <laughs>